Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update video from me, Martin, and uh, I'm an Inkscape developer uh, and I'm going to share with you what's happened this week. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to all of the people who continue to support me and my work on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if you can um, share and subscribe, um, that would be really great. So this week, the first thing is, is a bit of news. So tomorrow we are releasing the 1.0.2 uh, point release. This is the um, basically a bunch of fixes that have gone in since the 1.0.1 fix release. Um, the most important thing that you guys will want to probably want to know is that if you're using Inkscape and you keep on getting upset by the fact that it, the canvas rotates when you press shift, shift and control, this release contains a fix for that. You can turn off the canvas rotation. You can basically lock it in the preferences. And I highly recommend that if you're one of the many artists that suffer from this uh, user experience problem, uh, definitely check that out. Now, the code will drop tomorrow and the builds for Windows and Mac and so on will probably be available by the end of next week. So hopefully you'll all be able to take advantage of that. And le let me know if that if that bug is a, is a thing that affects you. Um, also dropping tomorrow is the 1.1 uh, Alpha. This is basically the first um, not pure developer release of the next ver version. It'll contain all of the fancy fe features that uh, we've been developing t together in the previous up update videos. Um, so it'd be great if you can check that out, especially if you've got some time that you can uh, help contribute to Inkscape to do testing. Uh, testing for the next r release will be very, very valuable to the project because your workflows can be di different from other people's workflows and you'll be able to test different parts of the pro program because Inkscape is pretty big. Um, this week, I've actually, there's been a lot of um, administration work, just helping people with things, merge requests, uh, board meetings, all those all the various bits and bobs. So um, code-wise, I've been uh, continuing on with the extensions manager, like I showed last week. Um, now we can install and uninstall and, and do lots of other things. Um, the, the, the two things are that uh, Javier very kindly uh, provided me with some code that allows the extensions themselves to refresh when the extensions manager is closed. Um, this code isn't complete yet, but it does mean that instead of popping up a warning that says, hey, you've just installed this new package, uh, close out of the extensions manager, close out of Inkscape, load Inkscape back up again in order to be able to see the extension. This should theoretically allow um, the, the extensions manager should just be closed and then Inkscape itself will refresh the extensions, which is something that I attempted to do um, a couple of months ago and I, and I failed. Like I just could not make the menu system and like a bunch of other things work properly. Um, but her beers patch seems pretty reasonable, so I'm going to give that a go. Um, I also had a really good com com conversation with some GIMP developers because uh, they're also trying to develop an extensions manager in a very similar way to what I'm trying to do for Inkscape. Um, and so we wanted to see if the approaches that we are each ta taking uh, can be whether there's anything that we can collaborate on, uh, whether we can share any code. Uh, and if, if we can't, because we both seem to have some pretty advanced projects, then maybe we can just share language, uh, like the way we call things and the kinds of ways we communicate what an extension is to users. If we can make those more consistent, then that's still a good uh, way to collaborate. Uh, but it was a good it was a good discussion, and it was great to, to see what the GIMP team are doing. Um, the final thing in this update video is that I wanted to show you what uh, Mike, Mike Hov, I think, um, a, a new, pretty new developer to Inkscape is doing with the Gradient Editor. So the Gradient Editor has fairly poor user experience and we spent a couple of weeks uh, in the UX team discussing and debating various different ways that the Gradient Editor, di like a dialogue, could be either re-implemented, brought back, um, and if it did, what would it look like? And honestly, I did not expect Mike to just run out and 
program and create the 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 design that Adam and various other uh, designers had had created. And uh, I've got to say, I'm I'm very impressed. It's it's almost completely ready. The unfortunate thing is, is that because of feature freeze, this gradient editor won't you won't see it until one one point two. So it won't be in Inkscape until may, maybe next year. Um, so if you're excited to see it, you may have to use either a developer release or a um, uh, an alpha when when those come out. Um, but let me know if this if if what you're seeing on the screen is um, exciting to, to to you because I, I want user feed feedback. Um, these these kinds of feed features they're they're very very exciting to see, especially when a new a new developer who can be encouraged to contribute to the project uh, comes up and understands the code well enough to be able to implement a feature like this. It's great to see. Um, and with that, I think that's pretty much everything this week. Um, let me know if you are if you have any thoughts about Inkscape, especially the next v version. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts about the extensions manager and what what we might be able to do there. Um, and thank you very much for watching.